Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about what to do if you have freight cars that you don't like. The best thing to do with uh, freight cars or cabooses that you don't like is to use them to practice custom painting. I looked through my uh, freight car collection there. There wasn't too many freight cars that I didn't like, uh, mostly because uh, I bought them, so I chose them. But sometimes I'll buy big lots and they'll have a, a few odd freight cars that I don't like. Um, this is an example. It's, it looks very toy-like, uh, despite being a good runner. So that might be something you want to paint. I want to keep it because I don't have too many uh, Sioux line uh, box cars. So that's what I'm going to keep like that. Uh, this is another example. Uh, this is what I don't like. These containers, they're not painted. They're obviously plastic color. Here, I'll show them to you close to the light. You can see when I hold them close to the light that they're completely uh, translucent. So that's something you don't want. So I'm going to repaint them. Same with these uh, Boston and Maine freight cars. They're completely translucent, so you don't want that. It's kind of a shame because it's Boston and Maine. And I would like uh, to have some more Boston and Maine stuff, but uh, because they're so translucent, I don't like that. Yeah, they don't look uh, too realistic either. And uh, the wrong color. This one, one came in, uh, I like this caboose, it was custom painted by someone else and uh, that we're going to want to paint for sure, it's got this chimney, that's really neat. And then this one from a previous episode, we're going to paint that as well and I've got a little chimney for it from another previous episode, we're going to put them together. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to put the chimney now. If you put the chimney now, it's going to get painted the same color as everything else. So that, you have to make a decision whether you want it to be the same color or black. I'm thinking I might go for, for black and just uh, paint it without. Probably will look better. And then the freight car itself is fine. It's just these little uh, containers. Oh, they're glued on there tight. Well, they may have to take one for the team. I had to wrestle with them for a little bit, but I got them through. The next step is you can flip through uh, all your leftover decals just to see uh, what you're going to find. Try to find a suitable railroad. If you don't have decals, you can use decals from another source. Maybe you can get uh, letters and numbers from uh, Michaels or something like that. I would go ahead and order uh, some, some micro scale. Micro scale is all that I use. Now, for example, this one, I think the, the sheet on that has been pretty used pretty much. Let's see what else I've got that's been used. I would use my leftover for that unless you have uh, you have exactly something that you like. Yeah that is the weirdest thing it says N on the package but I think these are a bit too big for N. That is so strange. It's an, uh, the, the big one is set for a high cube box car. Anyways, I'm going to use this for the two hoppers. That is going to be very cool. These types of decals where you can make uh, 
freight cars that are made for freight cars usually they're not too expensive people don't buy them like the engines you know and that's a good question too um do you really want to invest uh, five bucks or six bucks for decals and um you don't uh you can buy a new freight car if you buy them in big lots like that you can buy a new freight car let's say you buy a lot of five you can buy them for 50 bucks so that also that could probably work for today here's another set of mixed uh, decals it has uh, Conrail and Burlington Nutter and and the CNO BNO mix, all mixed together that might work for today this one see it's an HO scale but because it's the Husky stack the logos are very small so the logos can be used for N as well as maybe some of the other stuff. Uh, numbers are too big. But I've got other sets with decals. This Seaboard Airline Cabooses. There was another set that was cheap, but uh, I used it a lot. I think it's pretty much all used up. This, this I completely used it up, but that will have numbers if I need numbers. I still have a couple of uh, CP Pac-Man logos from that. That also, that bathtub gondola set is a good set. I got a lot of value out of that. You know, this is the set for the engines, but you can use these for the engines too. So I got a lot of good value out of that. CP cabooses, we'll keep that close by, you never know. The Via Rail passenger cars, that's a project I want to do someday, but that set has been sitting in my collection for three years, so someday. <laughs> Canadian National Web Address, basically it's a whole sheet with just CN. So I used that for engines and freight cars. That also was a good set that helped me out quite a bit. Pennsylvania boxcars. That's really cool. That too, I made a bunch of uh, boxcars out of it. I think I used it all up. Freight car data. That, um, that is a set that nobody ever uses, but uh, I managed to get one for myself, so I used it a lot. I still have some uh, decals in it. And I think the rest of my collection is all HO. Oh, wait a minute. I've got a pile at the bottom there. That's got a little bit of everything in it. That's got a little bit of everything. Seaboard coastline. Now that might come in handy today. This seaboard, I nearly used it all up. So uh, that's something I can use today. That's, uh, I can't do an engine with that anymore. It's too depleted. Now we're going to set up uh, to paint. I will remove uh, the trucks. <clears throat> Although you can, uh, there's a style, it gives a certain style to have the side frames painted the same color um, as the caboose. So you can remove the couplers as well. So for this example, I'm going to leave the couplers on and but I am going to remove the trucks. So this one's going to be ready for paint. You know, I can feel my, uh, my roof walk is a little bit loose on there. I'm going to add glue uh, at this stage. This side's good, but this side's loose. I'm going to use a little bit of glue uh, at this stage. This one I decided not to paint it. So these are ready to go. These little guys. 
they have an old system. I don't have many freight cars with this system. Just two tabs. Uh, two tabs from the freight car are holding. Let me just refocus that. Yeah, that did not help. Here we go. So two tabs on top of the freight car. Hold your truck. So that is not the, uh, the best system. I'm glad they don't do that anymore. And you can read uh, the Rapido logo. So this is pretty old. I don't know how old it is. It's before my time, so that's got to be old. The plastic is still pretty good when you think about it. One of my stirrups is bent here. When that happens, I just leave it like that. I don't worry about it too much. This guy's mixing a, a brake wheel. I'm going to put one on. And because I'm custom painting, I get to put a, a consecutive number on them. So uh, that's going to be a little extra effort, but these are going to turn out good. And then this one too, actually, I got a good picture of it. And it's going to turn out good as well. And then these, uh, they're just going to have a fantasy, uh, totally inaccurate fantasy paint job. But it's going to be an improvement at least. These are strands from my weed whacker. I just set them in here. And then I can put the, uh, the two strands. I can put them in my helping hands. Or I use clothespins. And that will, uh, will hold it up for me so I can paint even underneath. So that is something neat I can share with you. You can also use an old box with some masking tape to hold down your freight cars. You can see this box has been used many times. Since I'm going from a very dark green to a uh, bright orange, I'm going to put some silver paint. You can use primer. I use the silver paint because I can do very, very thin coats. So I'm just going to do very, very thin coats. And, you know, even if I don't have 100% coverage, that's still going to help. But I want it to be very thin. Thin coats also dry very fast. I'm going to finish off some old rattle cans here. But what you want to do is you want to start out... Always test out your cans uh, before you start. See, this can wasn't the, the nozzle's not really good. Let's try out this other nozzle. Much better. So, what you want to do is you want to start out with just some droplets, and then I go all around with the droplets. Then I keep going with the droplets like that. Keep going with the droplets until the droplets start touching each other. And I try to get all around and underneath and when the droplets touch each other that's when I stop you want to get paint on there as little as you can and black's got a very uh, very dark pigment so one coat that's all you need and the trick is once you get to that stage everything's perfect 
Don't touch it. So just drop that set first, but you go all around. And as the droplets touch, then you stop. You can see on the roof there, it's just perfect. If you get, if you find you get a little bit of orange peel, that is no big deal. They will settle uh, over time. So once you get to that stage, don't touch it. Remember, we're just practicing here. So if you make mistakes, it's okay. You know what they say, practice makes perfect. The orange is not as strong a pigment as the black, so I might have to give it two coats. Anyways, I'm starting with the droplets again. And then we'll see uh, what it looks like once I get more, more of it on there. But that's the secret. It's a thin coat. Even uh, my body shop there, when I bring my Corvette for painting, he'll paint the car and then he will cut and buff it. And that hides a lot of mistakes. For model railroading, the equivalent of cutting and buffing is a uh, tester's dull coat. That hides a lot. Yeah, so it's starting to shape up, but it's going to need two coats for sure. The gray that I'm using here also, it's, this one's very strong, very strong color. That's going to change quickly. Just like the black. Wow, that turned out amazing. So once you get to that stage, don't touch it. Everything is back from the paint shop. I got a little bit lucky there. Everything turned out great. It, uh, it's just a question of putting the decals on now. Like I said before, you know, practice makes perfect. And then this caboose here turned out awesome. I have a little bit of red left over there. I'm going to touch that up with a brush. That won't take long at all. And then these gondolas, these hoppers, they turned out awesome. A little bit too shiny though. They're obviously too shiny. But the paint job is really nice. The exact same for this one. This one, I was very worried about it. Ended up giving it three coats. But uh, that looks awesome. That, I got a little bit lucky there. Like I said, you know, practice makes perfect. So now I'm gonna take my decal sheet and I'm gonna cut them up so I can start uh, putting on my decals. I'm going to start with the containers because it's a fantasy scheme. I just have to go by uh, by my instinct, you know, what, what I think would look good. For the um, seaboard caboose, for the seaboard systems caboose, I have a good picture of the prototype so I can make it more accurate. I'm just going to put a number uh, on the bottom here that will look good. And I worked out 
I also cut out some script just to add an extra something. Maybe I'll put the uh, the number a bit higher and the script on the bottom. And then I'll just use my toothpick to place them where I want. Nice and straight. Actually, that's going to be just a little bit more towards the center. And then I'll take a little bit of paper towel and I'll blot out the, uh, the extra water. And then I'll let that dry. That looks pretty good to me. While that's drying, I'm going to work on the two uh, hoppers. So it's exactly the same thing. You slide in your decals. After the little numbers, that's going to be a lot of work. So I finished putting everything together and you can see I put the consecutive numbers on them. So that's one advantage of custom painting your freight cars. Now you could leave it like that, freshly shopped. That looks really good. And uh, you could have a couple of cars like that, you know, that look freshly shopped. I'm going to continue and put some dull coat on it though. The seaboard caboose is a pretty simple uh, paint scheme, so that should go very well. You just have to put the numbers on still. So that's really simple, just the logo and the numbers, and that's that. And then Atlantic coastline, it's the exact same thing. Pretty big logo. Uh, it's self uh, self destructing on me. That's why I prefer to use a uh, micro scale as much as I can. I'm gonna do my best to fix this. I managed to save it, but that was an adventure. I'm gonna put some dull coat on this. It uh, on this side especially. It's got a little bit of uh, little dots there. This is not perfect, but uh, just like my mechanic, uh, my body shop, when they paint my car, if they have dust in the paint, they will uh, cover their mistake by cutting and buffing the car. The same uh, with model railroads. If you make little mistakes like that, you can cover them by putting some dull coat. Everything's back from the paint shop with the dull coat. It looks uh, much more professional. So I am going to glue, just glue these back on here. Basically uh, just the way they were. But uh, that looks much better already. Big improvement. Actually, I'm glad I did this. Same with this caboose, it was a basket case when I started out. And now it looks pretty good. If you'd like to own these, I'm going to put uh, all five of them uh, for sale on my website. It's watchtrainsnow.com. Yeah, that looks really good. Don't forget to put on your chimney. It's like uh, the cherry on the Sunday. Very important. You gotta line it up 
just right. Yeah, that's amazing what your eyes can pick out, eh? Very small details. But uh, it all counts for some reason. And then this one. If it was a miracle I could use these decals, they would just uh, fall apart on me. But I did it. I was very patient. So this is kind of a fantasy scheme because the uh, the real uh, caboose has got black lettering. But, you know, all things considered, I'm uh, still pleased with the results. Oh, this is on there tight. That's not too normal. I just played with them a little bit and they came around. The, uh, I really like these Backman wheels that are all metal. You know, it really sounds like a train because it goes like clickety crack. So I tried to get as many metal wheels as I can. I still got a bunch of the Kado ones I ordered from uh, Plaza Japan. I suppose that should be a video where I put them on. You know, I put them on my favorite freight cars. But these roll well as well. So that's nice to have. And with, um, with the doll coat, it really uh, brings everything together. So that looks very good. Just put the old trucks back on. These are a little bit hard to take off, but putting them back on, it's really easy. If you got them lined up properly. Also putting the, the brake wheel back before you paint it, the advantage is the brake wheel will be black and match everything perfectly. Now these, I should put a load in these, but uh, I don't have time because I want to upload the video uh, this week. All right, let's go pick out an engine and then we can run this. I haven't run this engine in a while. It's a GP30, it's an Atlas. And I think this is the new style shell, but it's got the old style drive, which is non-DCC. So I kept it with the uh, Rapido type coupler. So I'm gonna be able to run it with this train. I was looking for a um, seaboard system engine. I have a couple but they all have micro trains uh, type couplers. So I won't be able to run them with this train. And now it's time to run some trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.